Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Rappaport. And as director of the Center for the Study of Constitutional Originalism, it's a pleasure to welcome everyone to San Diego and to USD for the fourth annual You and Hazel Darling Foundation Originalism Works in Progress Conference. The Originalism Center has actually had a pretty busy year this year. And just to mention two highlights, earlier in the year, the center hosted the first You and Hazel Darling Foundation Judicial Lecture on Constitutional Originalism, given by Judge Diarmuid O'Scanlan of the Ninth Circuit. And then last month, Richard Epstein gave a talk here discussing his new book on the classical liberal constitution that presents an originalist defense of Richard's understanding of the constitution. <laughs> I didn't quite mean that as a laugh line, but OK. <laughs> Uh, videos of both these events are available at the center's website. Um, but the highlight of the year for the Originalism Center is, of course, the annual Works in Progress Conference. And now that we're up to the fourth year of the conference, we'd like to believe that the conference is something of a regular institution within academic originalism. Hopefully scholars know that when they write an article on originalism, either for it or against it, there's a significant chance it'll be selected for and then discussed at the originalism conference. One of the nice things about the conference is that it gives us a real window into the originalist scholarship that is being produced. And I thought we could use this window to help us briefly get a sense of the landscape of recent originalist scholarship. So in the four years of the conference, including this one, there have been 29 papers given. And while these are obviously not all of the papers on originalism that were produced in the last four years, I would venture to say that they're at least a significant fraction of the leading papers. And so to get a sense of the papers, I've kind of classified them in accordance with a variety of categories, categories such as whether they involve originalist methodology, normative considerations, the original constitution, the reconstruction amendments, criticisms of originalism. Um, so what are the results? The most popular category for papers involves the reconstruction amendments. 28% of the papers were in this area. And this suggests, I think, that the common claim that originalists ignore the 14th Amendment is mistaken. It was probably true 10 or 20 years ago, but it's no longer true. Originalists understand that this is an important area. The problem, at least, uh, the problem is, at least in my view, it's also an extremely difficult area. Three categories were tied for the second most common type of paper, each with 21% of the papers. One of these categories involved criticisms of originalism. All right, so just as originalist scholarship has continued to grow, so has the criticisms of originalism. And two of the papers in this year's conference fell into that category. Another of these categories in the second group with 21% of the papers is originalist methodology, which is really no surprise, right? Now, originalist methodology has always been a popular topic. Um, uh, but interestingly, very few of the methodology papers are about the classical question of original intent versus original public meaning. And instead, the scholarship has moved on to other issues, such as how judges, as opposed to scholars, should apply originalism or what are the original interpretive rules that judges should apply. The third of these categories, again, in this second group with 21% of the papers, involves the original Constitution, including the Bill of Rights. Now, this is thought to be a staple of originalism, but actually not that many papers fell into this category. And three of them grew out of the Obamacare litigation by itself. So while there's been a limited number of papers on the original Constitution, I think it's noteworthy 
that there has not really been a single paper done on the Bill of Rights, with the possible exception of Will Bode's paper, which is really you know, more about the enumerated powers than the takings clause. Um, but you know, it, it's an exception, maybe. Um, this paucity of papers actually is a bit surprising since there's really been significant work done on the second and the fourth and the fifth and the seventh and the eighth amendments. Um, finally, one new area of interest as reflected in the papers for this year's conference is comparative originalism. Uh, the two papers on this subject are both from this year's conference, but as an aside, I think it's noteworthy to mention Jamal Green's paper on Canada and Australia from a few years ago, and portions of a book that uh, Grant Huscroft did based on a conference some years ago that involved some on Canadian originalism, or the lack thereof. Um, well, if originalism is an important part of American constitutional law, then it's really no surprise that it would be of interest to ask to what extent it exists and operates in the legal systems involving constitutional law closest to the American one. All right. Well, having engaged in this brief review of the scholarship produced for the last four years, let me now turn to this year's conference. Putting together a conference of this sort involves a great deal of work and so I'd like to thank various people. And first, I want to thank Mike Ramsey. Mike planned this conference with me as he did all of them, well, you know, all of them, um, even from Australia one year, um, from the beginning, doing an enormous amount of work at every stage. I also want to thank Steve Smith, who also put in a significant amount of work on the conference. Thanks also to Dean Stephen Ferullo for support for both the conference and the center. In addition, I want to recognize Tara Murphy and Trang Pham in the, in the back of the room uh, for all of their hard work in, in organizing the conference and for doing just so many things. Um, they've made my life much easier, so I personally want to thank them very much. Um, and finally, I want to thank Rick, St Rick Stack and the U and Hazel Darling Foundation for their generous support. Their grant to the center has made possible the continuation of this conference, as well as a host of other activities that the center runs. Let me now say a few words about the administrative matters concerning the conference. Uh, the papers will work as follows. First, the paper presenter will have 10 minutes to summarize their paper. The commentator then will have 10 minutes to give their comments. And then the presenter will have two to three minutes to respond. We'll then open it up for discussion with a cue to be kept by the moderator. To avoid the situation where the paper presenter feels the need to respond to every comment made by the participants, the discussion is generally going to follow a rule of three. The moderator will allow three persons to speak and then and only then will give the presenter and the commentator an opportunity to respond if they wish. Presenters should not feel obliged to respond to every question. Something new this year, though. The moderator, however, will have the discretion to depart from this arrangement, not for the paper presenter or the commentator who will have plenty of opportunities to, to respond, but to allow one of the conference participants to interject or respond if someone has raised a point concerning their view. So if somebody's making a point around the table and they, they say something about some of the other persons at the, at the table and it makes sense to, to have a brief response, the moderator will have the, the uh, discretion to do so. But let's not create more than a couple of such departures from the per session. Okay, with, with those announcements completed, I thought we might start the conference by, by having everyone introduce themselves along with their affiliation. I'm Mike Rappaport, University of San Diego. Don, do you want to? I'm Don Driss, USD Law. I'm Michael Schwartz-Child, USD Law. Gerard Magliaca, Indiana University, Robert McKinney School of Law. Uh, Chris Green, University of Mississippi, is in a here today. Randy Barnett from Georgetown Law. Uh, Tom Coley from George Washington Law. Uh, Michael McConnell from Stanford. Uh, John McGinnis from Northwestern. Uh, Mike Ramsey from USD. Larry Sullivan from Georgetown. Greg Maggs from GW. Bob Bennett from Northwestern. Stephen Sachs from Duke. 
Nathan Chapman, a fellow at Stanford. Uh, Will Bowen, also a fellow at Stanford. Larry Alexander, USD Law. Larry Solon, Brooklyn Law School. David Upham, Department of Politics, University of Dallas. Grant Huscroft, University of Western Ontario Law. James Allen, I teach in uh, Australia at the University of Queensland, and I'm here for a semester. Marty Reddish, Northwestern. Uh, Earl Maltz, Rutgers, Hampton. Uh, Steve Smith from USD. Lawrence Bass, USD. And Brian just came in, it looked like, so we should. Uh, Brian Willenthal, Thomas Jefferson School of Law. Yeah.